All right, we're doing some myth busting today. How's that sound? Is that great? All right. How many of you know everything there is about soy? Right, maybe not. Okay. All right, so one thing that people have concerns about soy is that it causes problems in the human body. You know, um, there was one blog that um, my wife Jamie had looked at, and this one mom was concerned and her ped uh, about her daughter eating soy, and the pediatrician said, well, cut the soy out because it's going to cause her mature early and give her milk. Okay, well, that's not a good idea. So there's a lot of, of, uh, of, of myths about um, soy, and we're going to just, the first article, this comes, a summary comes from PCRM.org, and um, it's entitled, New Research Disputes the Biggest Soy Myths, okay? All right, and this was just published um, April 14 of this year, so just a few days ago. It says, new, researches, new, new research addresses myth surrounding soy intake in an article published in Critical Reviews in Food, Science, and Nutrition. The authors note that concern over the safety of isoflavins, which are the chemicals in soy which people are concerned about, um, phytoestrogens found in soy products were largely based on non-human animal studies that did not reflect human biology. Researchers reviewed 417 um, reports based on human data on isoflavin intake and endocrine-related health outcomes. Evidence suggests isoflavin intake does not adversely affect the thyroid, estrogen, ovarian in, ovar ovulation function in women, or serum levels in men. These publications showed no negative effects in children. These results suggest that neither isoflavins nor soy foods should be classified as endocrine disruptors associated with um, adverse health outcomes. Soy products, listen to this, are actually associated with, guess what? A reduced risk of breast cancer and prostate cancer. So um, is that good news? All right, and so um, it, soy is kind of, there's a huge controversy surrounding soy, um, and um, that's just one article, and there's a, a couple of other articles that are loosely tied to this. Um, one, um, which was dated, um, October 23 of last year, says soy products reduce the risk of dementia. That sounds good, right? <laughs> well, how, many, how many of you guys is, want to de develop dementia? I mean, honestly, come on. Um, so if there's a way to reduce that, um, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'd, I'd be in too. So soy products reduce the risk of dementia. It says metabolite produced in the gut from consuming soy products known as equal may reduce the risk for dementia, according to a study published in Alzheimer's and Dementia. Researchers examined brain magnetic res or MRI images of white matter lesions associated with cognitive disease in 91 elderly participants and tracked the serum equal levels. Those who produced more equal levels from dietary soy products had 50% fewer matter lesions than those with lower equal levels. Japanese populations have gut microbiota well suited to produce soy metabolites compared to Americans due to their higher consumption of dietary soy. Um, equal also improved dementia risk by improving arterial stiffness associated with white matter lesions and increased microbacteria function later in life. So eat your soy. It's safe. Um, the, 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 only, the question I always get is, you know, how do you cook this stuff? And um, that's a whole other topic, um, but it really takes on the flavor of anything you um, put it in. Um, lastly, um, how many of you want to reduce your risk of heart disease? That's a good one, right? All right. So guess what? Soy products reduce the risk of heart disease. <laughs> so, all right. And isoflavins found in tofu and other soy products lower the risk of coronary disease, according to research published in Circulation. And this um, news release was dated March 23 of last year. Um, it says researchers at Harvard analyzed dietary records from the Nurses Health Study 1 and 2 for participants um, free of heart disease and tracked non fatal myocardial infarctions and monitor uh, mortality from heart disease. Higher intakes of Thai flu, sorry, higher intakes of tofu were associated with reduced risk of coronary artery disease by up to 18% compared with um, lower intakes of tofu. The results were more profound in um, postmenopausal women. Isoflavins may reduce the risk by binding estrogen receptors to improve endothelial function and improve the microbacteria. The authors conclude that soy products um, may be an effective dietary approach to coronary heart disease prevention. So the long and short of it, um, uh, tofu is not to be afraid of. It actually tastes quite good when prepared um, well. 
um, and um, and uh, so it's good for our hearts, good for our minds, and it's um, good to help keep us in a healthy um, uh, overall um, physique so that when disease comes along, we're able to better fight it as well. And so uh, once again, uh, we strive to um, bring these health topics so that we can stay healthy, so that we're healthy to help spread the word of God. And that's the whole point of life anyway, right? And so with that, amen.